SpaceX is moving at a record pace with Booster 19. The massive aft section with 33 Raptor 3 engine mounts rolled into the Mega Bay on Saturday, stacking all oxygen tank segments in one swift move. By Tuesday night, the first methane tank barrel appeared, followed days later by the forward section with its integrated hot stage truss. What's the secret behind this speed? Only one final methane tank section remains, and at this rate, it could roll out before you finish watching this. Could Booster 19 become the fastest Super Heavy ever built? Let's dive right in. The numbers tell a story that's hard to believe. Booster 19's construction timeline is shattering every expectation we had about Super Heavy production. When that final aft section emerged from the Star Factory on Saturday morning, it wasn't just another hardware milestone, it was a statement. This massive segment, engineered to support 33 Raptor 3 engines, rolled directly into the Mega Bay within hours. No delays, no extended integration prep, just pure execution. What's changed in SpaceX's manufacturing approach that's making this possible? The answer becomes clearer when you look at what's missing. This aft section exited the factory with slightly less external hardware than Booster 18 had at the same stage. Some components in the strake areas weren't installed yet, likely connected to the ongoing Booster 18 investigation. But here's the critical insight. SpaceX isn't letting investigation slow down production. They're building with confidence in their core design while leaving room to implement lessons learned. It's a calculated risk that speaks volumes about their manufacturing maturity. By Tuesday night, the first methane tank barrel appeared. Not the top section, not the bottom, the middle barrel. This sequencing reveals something fascinating about their parallel workflow strategy. While one team finalized oxygen tank integration, another team had already completed the methane tank's middle section and was deep into work on the forward dome. The production line isn't linear anymore. It's simultaneous, with multiple critical assemblies progressing at once across different bays and stations. Then came the forward methane section days later, and this piece carried special significance. The integrated hot stage truss was already attached, fully equipped and ready. Remember when hot stage integration used to happen late in the assembly process? Those days are gone. SpaceX is now building these complex structural elements as unified components from the start. What does this integration strategy mean for structural integrity and testing timelines? The speed isn't just about moving metal faster, it's about complete system redesign. Every weld, every sensor placement, every plumbing run has been optimized through 18 previous super heavy builds. The learning curve has flattened dramatically and the team knows exactly what works. That institutional knowledge is now embedded in the hardware design itself, reducing the decision points and potential delays at every step. Over in Mega Bay 2, Ship 39 construction reveals another dimension of this accelerated pace. The first version 3 ship moved between work stands with practiced efficiency while workers installed massive raceways carrying hundreds of sensors, pipes, and wires from the aft section all the way to the payload bay. These aren't simple cable runs. They're the nervous system of a spacecraft, and they're being installed with precision that would have taken weeks just two years ago. The team lifted these raceways into position, secured them, and moved on to the next task without missing a beat. But then something unexpected happened. Workers began replacing the entire set of COPVS in Ship 39's nose cone with new units. Every single one wrapped in protective red covering was swapped out. This wasn't scheduled maintenance. This was a response to something. While SpaceX hasn't confirmed the connection to Booster 18's catastrophic COPV failure, the timing is impossible to ignore. The company is taking zero chances with pressure vessel integrity, even if it means additional days of work. Is this precaution or evidence of a systemic issue they've identified? The Gigabay construction in the background adds context to SpaceX's long-term production vision. The massive structure now stands at full height on its eastern side, with six enormous bay openings ready to accommodate multiple starships simultaneously. Tower cranes climbed higher last Friday, beginning work on the third level. When this facility reaches full operational capacity, the production rate we're seeing now with Booster 19 won't be exceptional. It'll be standard. How many starships per month can this facility actually support? 
Down at Massey's test site, the work never stops. The booster AF structure test article completed its 12th cryogenic test on Thursday, pushing the hardware to find failure points that haven't emerged yet. 12 tests might sound excessive, but each one validates design margins and material performance under extreme conditions. This is how SpaceX builds confidence to move fast on production hardware. They punish test articles until something breaks, learn from it, and apply those lessons immediately. The static fire station modifications reveal another piece of the puzzle. New steel trusses appeared at the site, matching components seen earlier at Sanchez. These aren't random additions. They're part of a deliberate expansion of test infrastructure. The gusset plates welded to the static fire stand legs suggest SpaceX is preparing for different test configurations, possibly related to the docking adapters or hatch access systems we've seen on human landing system renders. What new capabilities are they validating? The methane tank farm blast wall reached completion this week, its formwork ready to come off. More importantly, the farm itself came to life with active systems flowing. This timing isn't coincidental. It aligns perfectly with Ship 39's approaching static fire campaign. Every piece of infrastructure is converging toward the same goal. Faster test cycles, shorter ground time, more flights. Back at the rocket garden, we see the physical evidence of SpaceX's iterative design philosophy. Booster 17's version 2 aft section sits beside Booster 18's version 3 aft, and the differences are striking. The evolution in just one generation shows how aggressively SpaceX refines their design between builds. These aren't minor tweaks. They're fundamental improvements in structural efficiency, thermal management, and engine integration. Booster 18's forward section with the hot stage truss still attached rests in the scrapyard. A reminder that even failures generate invaluable data. The cleanup from Booster 18's destruction is nearly complete now. The test stand cleared and inspected. Engineers kept the chine sections containing COPVS for further investigation, but the site is ready for Booster 19's arrival. The investigation continues, but it's not stopping forward progress. This is the SpaceX approach. Learn while you build, build while you test, test while you fly. Meanwhile, Pad 1 transformation accelerates with the water-cooled steel plate removal almost finished. Only a few pieces remained in the latest aerial shots, and excavation of the trench shape has begun. The challenge now is dealing with the rebar and central piles buried beneath the surface. But this work is progressing faster than the deluge system modifications. Three massive water storage tanks were lifted out and transported to the port of Brownsville, along with the carbon dioxide tank for the booster's fire suppression system. The methane reclamation tanks are gone too. What's being installed in their place will define Pad 1's capabilities for the next generation of launches. Over at Pad 2, modifications to the tower arms raised questions when both actuators were removed. These were supposedly new operational systems. Why remove them? This week provided answers. Much deeper modifications are underway. Large arm pieces delivered earlier were offloaded beside the trench walls, and workers installed five new control boxes on the carriage replacing the original four. This isn't maintenance. This is an upgrade to handle increased capability. Did testing earlier this year reveal limitations that required this level of redesign? The air separation site screams with activity. Massive blue three-phase induction motors arrived to power new compressor equipment with foundations already being laid across previously dug piles. The concrete pile caps will support heavy liquefaction and purification gear. This infrastructure expansion directly enables higher launch cadence. More liquid oxygen production means more launches, plain and simple. The ship quick disconnect arm at Sanchez gained its critical end piece this week. The large gray section with integrated walkways was lifted into position, complete with a mounting point for the ship interface that raises and lowers during fueling operations. Workers swarmed over it immediately, installing the quick disconnect interface with urgency. Next-generation ship transport stands are already taking shape nearby, with the first stand receiving its clamp while the second stand's components are being welded together. Everything is moving toward operational readiness. This synchronized progress across every site reveals SpaceX's true manufacturing revolution. It's not about building one booster faster. It's about transforming the entire production and test ecosystem 
to support sustained rapid manufacturing. Booster 19 is simply the first to fully benefit from all these parallel improvements converging at once. Booster 19 represents more than just faster construction. It's proof that SpaceX has fundamentally transformed spacecraft manufacturing. What we're witnessing isn't a one-time sprint, it's the new baseline. Every system, every team, every facility across Starbase is now synchronized to support this pace continuously. The methane tank sections rolling out days apart, the COPV replacements happening without scheduled disruption, the test infrastructure expanding in parallel. These aren't isolated improvements. They're parts of a complete manufacturing revolution. The most remarkable aspect, this is still version three hardware. SpaceX is learning, refining, and accelerating simultaneously. When version four arrives, the speed we're seeing now will look slow by comparison. That's the trajectory we're on. Here's what matters most. Booster 19 could be fully stacked before the final methane section even gets mentioned in next week's update. The team has cracked the code on rapid super heavy production and 2025 is positioned to be the year when Starship launches become routine rather than remarkable. So what do you think will be the next record Booster 19 breaks? Will it complete its test campaign faster than any previous booster? Drop your predictions in the comments below. If this deep dive into SpaceX's manufacturing evolution gave you new insights, hit that like button and share this with anyone who needs to understand where Starship production is really headed. And subscribe to Space Update 24 Hours. We're tracking every development as it happens. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. We're entering 2026, the most consequential year yet for SpaceX's Starship program. The company must land an uncrewed Starship on the moon before December 31st, meeting a contractual requirement that determines whether NASA's crewed Artemis III mission can proceed in 2027. How does SpaceX plan to achieve this? And can they really pull off something this complex with everything that needs to happen first? Let's dive right in. SpaceX finds itself in an uncomfortable position. The company that revolutionized spaceflight with